In this lesson, you'll see a broadcast receiver application in action, and we'll look at its Java code. You'll learn the essentials of creating a broadcast receiver. This app, called Broadcast Receiver Example, is included in the Working File Samples workspace for the course. In the emulator on the right of the screen, you see the app running. If you watch toward the bottom of the screen, you'll see a toast message appear periodically saying that an action time tick intent has been received. Now, this toast is being issued by the broadcast receiver in our app responding to an intent that's sent by the Android system every minute on the minute at the same instant that the time changes in the notifications bar at the upper right. So you can watch for this message as we discuss the broadcast receiver code, which is shown in the Eclipse window to the left. Well, there it is right now. Action time tick, intent received. And you'll see it appear every minute. So let's look at the code. In the Java code, we first see the package name and class imports. And notice the inclusion of the broadcast receiver class, context, intent, and intent filter classes that'll be used in our app. Next in line 12, we have a declaration for the main activity of the app. And this is the activity that displays the screen you see here and contains a definition of the broadcast receiver. Now let's look at line 19, the statement that defines the filter that's used by the system to check for the action time tick intent. It creates a new instance of an intent filter using the action time tick constant in the intent class. Next, in line 22, we have the code that defines and instantiates the broadcast receiver itself. It creates a new object using the broadcast receiver class and assigns it to the variable receiver. Next, we have the body of the broadcast receiver object starting at line 25. It has a single method, onReceive, which is overriding the onReceive method of the broadcast receiver class. This is the code that's executed when the broadcast receiver is activated in response to the action time tick intent. The onReceive method at line 26 includes two parameters, context and intent. And since this method is overriding the broadcast receiver method, that method will handle the context and intent based on the registration of the receiver, which we'll see below in a minute. In the body of the onReceive method is where we do the work of the broadcast receiver. In this small sample app in lines 30 through 33, we're just toasting the message action time tick intent received that you're seeing over here every minute. In some comments below the toast statement, I've included a few important items. First, once the broadcast receiver returns from this method, the system considers the object to be finished and no longer active. Because of this, the onReceive method can't implement asynchronous operations, show a dialog, or bind a service. And this is because there would be nothing for those entities to come back to. The onReceive method would have finished and not be reactivated until another intent is received. So if you need to do these things, consider using a service component in conjunction with the broadcast receiver. And you can see our lessons on services for more information about services. Another note is to consider using a local broadcast manager class if you're broadcasting only within a single application and you can find out more about this class on the developer's website. Next, starting in line 53, we have the onCreate method for the main activity. It's easy to get a little confused here. This isn't the onCreate method for the broadcast receiver. In fact, the broadcast receiver doesn't have an onCreate method. The onReceive method that we saw at line 26 is the equivalent for a broadcast receiver. It's initiated when the broadcast receiver is created for its brief life to respond to an intent. So the onCreate method for our main activity, in line 55, we do the standard set content view for our main layout, our user interface that we see here. 
Next at line 62 is the on resume method. It's here that we register the receiver and its associated intent filter using the register receiver method. And that's in line 63. If you recall from the life cycle of an activity, the on resume method shown here is executed after the on create method and when an activity is resumed after being paused. And note the position of the on resume method in the total life cycle. Since it's executed both after an on create and after an on pause, it's a good position for registering our broadcast receiver. Per the note at line 58, in some cases, receivers can be registered using XML code in the manifest. Consult the developer's website documentation for the individual intent to determine if the manifest can be used for registration. The action time tick that we're using is one of the intents that can't be registered via the manifest. So if we look at the detailed description of action time tick on the developer's website, we see the statement that the manifest can't be used. You cannot receive this through components declared in the manifests only by explicitly registering for it with the register receiver. Finally, in our main activity starting at line 68, we have the on pause method. In this method at line 69, we unregister the receiver to remove an unnecessary load from the system. So that's our look at the broadcast receiver application, and we'll examine some of the classes and objects broadcast receivers use in the next lesson.